Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, January 22nd, 2016. I'm starting this video about uh, quarter till 2 Eastern Time, and wanted to do a quick overview of um, what's happened in the markets recently. More importantly, where I think we're going here in the near term, and I'll share my, my thoughts, my personal trading strategy for what it's worth. Everybody has different trading styles, um, but uh, I'll let you know what I'm thinking here. Uh, let's just start out by taking a look at this uh, QQQ four-hour chart. And keep in mind, when I do the videos, if I'm on the, the, black, uh, the black background charts, I'm typically on my TC2000 charting program. I use quite a few. Uh, and if you look up here in the upper, upper left-hand corner, if I don't mention it, this will show you what time frame we're looking at here. So this is a QQQ four-hour chart. Um, I did a video uh, a few recently, but last Friday, a week ago today, um, as we were approaching this level, I talked about how I, I thought that the the odds were at the, that point quickly skewing towards and already at you know favoring the long side, but there was still there was still a chance of one more washout flush out move because we were only approaching the top of that support zone. And uh, these are the same lines from that chart Friday. You can reference that video. Beautiful, beautiful price action, as I mentioned when I did a video on Wednesday and uh, throughout the day in the post. These two candlesticks, uh, they are both Wednesday sticks. And what you see here is we had an intraday break, but a strong close back above support. And that's the bottom of the support range. Uh, so again, you see the red candlestick. That was uh, one of Friday's four-hour candlesticks. And there's the closing stick. Uh, we closed back up at uh, 175, 175, uh, well above the top of the trading uh, support range. So in trading, as I mentioned, very few things are more powerful than a false breakdown, aka uh, bear trap in this uh, situation. You have, um, not really sure who would have the gumption to short with the market being so oversold and those divergences in place, but I, I guarantee you there were some traders that saw that uh, beautiful support shelf and the breakdown and and jumped in and shorted. Now they're being squeezed out. Uh, you have longs that, that maybe were sitting on the sidelines, and once they saw that that support level held, especially the bullish candlestick that was printed, um, then they probably jumped in long. So, again, that's all covered. That was covered in Wednesday's video as well. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to get a, you know, aggressively long right at the lows. I mean, pennies off the lows. Um, and uh, that's that's my current plan is to remain long, but not for a whole lot longer. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Here are, this is the 60-minute chart of the queues. I've also posted this in static form. I put this up yesterday, I believe, uh, mentioning this downtrend line and a comparable downtrend line in the SPY, the S&P 500 tracking ETF. As expected, the, the initial attempt to get through these trend lines uh, was met with resistance. As I often talk about, uh, the initial tags of uh, resistance, including a trend line from below, especially after such a strong run-up. You know, we had several intraday attempts to get through. Uh, again, we're looking here at a 60-minute chart, but yet we failed to do that and then gapped up um, a really nice today, nice strong gap up. Uh, one thing I talk about in trading, you know, when I, I you know, I listen, read, uh, I've heard from other traders, and, uh, you know, a lot of traders will say, I don't anticipate or try to, yeah, I don't anticipate or try to guess where prices are going. I react. Um, I, to me, that's baloney. I don't know. Everyone has their own trading style. Um, but as I mentioned in, in some of the recent videos, you can't react to a market like this. You have to predict where it's going. Um, there are times in trading, many times, where I think you should not be trading and should step aside. You should keep it light. Uh, but when it's time to engage the market, when the when volatility spikes, this is when we as traders make money, either in these sharp down moves or these sharp up moves. Uh, good luck to anybody that successfully traded, uh, you know, this sideways, unpredictable, sloppy trading range. You know, there were short-term day trades to be made, but you couldn't swing trade this. Uh, but this is where a lot of money was made on the downside. And we were short up here near the highs and officially covered the um, shorts here and reversed on Wednesday. And again, that is on the way down, as I mentioned, there were a lot of gaps down that gap below the support levels. I already went over that in the previous videos. Likewise, let's look at this trend line, for example. Let's say that uh, you recognize this trend line or other traders recognize this trend line and said, well, I'll wait for a breakout above that trend line. 
you didn't get that opportunity. Today the market's gapped. As you can see up here in the upper right-hand corner, the, the Qs are trading at up to 2.6%, and they're really not a whole lot higher than they opened. So they gapped up very strong today, and that is just not an objective entry. You can't chase an entry like that, especially <clears throat> considering the fact that we're just below my first price target now of you know 103.29. That's defined by the top of this gap here, as you can see the uh, that reaction there. There's another reaction there. We have the 38.2 Fib retracement. That's from uh, the move off the highs, the recent highs in the queues. Uh, so that is a you know nice support zone. I set my targets a little bit below the actual uh, resistance level, and um, I do think that this bounce over time in the next uh, let's just say few weeks. We'll probably make it up here to the 106.25 level. I'd put a good, pretty good odds on that. Uh, could could very well go higher. Could quite possibly backtest this. However, it will if it gets up there, it'll be doing it without me. Um, this is what I wanted to talk on. My trading plan is to start reducing exposure here. Uh, the Apple long trade I mentioned in the trading room today. It's up. Uh, as I'm watching, it's 25 cents exactly below the uh, price target of 150. $100.50 right now. So we're trading at $125. Uh, I'll be out of Apple. Um, I'll be reducing uh, long exposure. And I, I may even take all my long exposure off and wait for a pullback and then jump back in. Or I'll let some ride up here. As I mentioned, there's, there's you know m several ways to skin a cat and there's many ways to trade in the markets. You can trail stops up. Uh, you can try to game the reactions and the pullback, you know, in other words, close your positions there and then wait for a pullback to reposition. There's a nice gap below. It wouldn't surprise me if we do hit the, this line's at 10, call it almost 104. So as you can see there, 103.97 is the blue line and uh, my target set a little bit below that. So for example, we might go up there, maybe even go up to that uh, 38.2 fib pull back and then this would be an objective level to re-enter. Uh, re uh, there's nice uh, horizontal support there right around 102.40. That's the bottom of the gap or these two reaction highs I should say. And then we also have uh, 102.50. So that would be probably right around 102.70 is where I'd scale back in if, uh, for any profits that I take now uh, or soon here on the longs. And um, again, uh, if and when we make it up at this point, and as I always say, the, the, the charts are, are dynamic. They're not static. So what I'm looking at today can and will change. I, I may see something. Uh, as you know, I look at uh, not just the markets that I'm trading. I look at the individual stocks. Uh, and if I see a bunch of stocks coming to support, as I did the other day on the queues, that's why I went on, on Wednesday's video my reason for going long was, uh, although the queues looked ugly and were well below the support level I was watching, just about all the big components of the QQQ, including Apple, were at key support. Hence, uh, my reasoning for to expect or for expecting a uh, reversal in the market, which so far so good. Uh, now, the reason that I will at this point, if we do get up here most likely have moved either to a uh, all cash market neutral or even possibly a net short position from being net long uh, is is this I let me see if I can find this post you know several times in the past on the site I've mentioned um, I, I, I coined the term velocity it's not anything I've read in a book I make a lot of my terms up maybe there can be found elsewhere but let me try to highlight this here uh, Okay, this is a post made back in uh, May of 2012, and I just want to talk about this velocity. I, this is really what plays into my trading and my mindset uh, when, when trading the markets, even as a swing trader, sometimes as a day trader by default, if, if you know something that I'm trading happens to have a huge move. And, uh, you know, the other day we had that one day trade in TQQ, uh, you know, for double digit return. And so I, I, booked profits and uh, the what I wanted to talk about here is what I call velocity and I'll read this real quick you know for a for a trader profitability is all about velocity I would rather make 10% in two weeks on a short trade than 10% on a long trade that takes two months 
For example, if an active trader starting with $10,000 were to make just one trade a month for a 10% gain, reinvesting his gains every month, at the end of the year they would have 38,000, we'll call it almost 32,000. If another trader who started with the same 10,000 reinvested in the profits each trade, made the same 10% per trade, but had a holding period of three months to do so, which would be four trades per year, they would have 14,641 at the end of the first year. So as you can see, less than half. Um, so anyways, it goes on. And this is why I'll often state that I think full profit should be taken in a final target, even if I believe that that trade might continue to play out for additional gains over a matter, additional gains over time. It's a matter of being able to redeploy that capital into another trade offering a much better RR profile, meaning risk reward profile, and usually a much shorter expected holding period to make the same percentage gain on the next target. So essentially what I'm saying there, folks, it's all about your capital. Unless you have an unlimited pool of funds to work with, uh, most of us have a limited amount of money. And uh, it's a matter of during a trade, you know, if I can book profits here and maybe get all the way out here, even if we are going to go any higher. Uh, it might take quite a bit longer. You can see these initial pops when you get down, when you're extremely oversold, you have these bullish divergences in place. That initial move is strong. This was a V bottom, as you can see there. I don't really have to draw it out, but most you can see, you know, this V bottom. Now, very doubtful, it's going to look like this. My guess is it'll look something like this, hence the reason for my price targets. So... Uh, you know, even if we happen to clear this T2 level <clears throat> at that point, we could be in another sideways trading range uh, or who knows. Uh, again, this all may change. My plan may change. But as of now, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, I'll be out of Apple here really soon. Uh, it's now at 138 uh, second ago. And, um, you know, so I'll be gradually reducing exposure. If we get a pullback, uh, I might even take some some of the index uh, the index longs off. I have individual stocks. Again, I, I look at each stock based on its own charts. But I can tell you this, as I always say, birds of a feather flock together. If the Qs and the SPY pull back, let's just say one two percent after hitting this target level, just about all individual stocks that are within those indexes will come back. Uh, in line because of the forced selling that they they come under when the indexes are sold. So uh, that's 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 my trading plan. And let's just take a look at the uh, charts of the spy rope. Okay, this is the spy from uh, 60 minute time frame. Uh, we've already hit that first target zone. I put these charts up yesterday. Again, you can see we attempted to take out the uh, downtrend line. A few failed attempts. Little spikes over. Closed right a, right about on it. And then, boom, gapped up today, and the SPY, as you can see, is trading up about 2%. We're already at the top of that target zone, and uh, the next target there is 103.20. Uh, so, once again, um, you know, I think there might be a little more upside today. Um, and, I, and, and by no means would I be surprised if we just you know, continue right on through those levels with maybe just a minor reaction. So far we are, this is a reaction. You can see we've already kissed it once, twice, the top of that zone. So, you know, I consider or I define a reaction as a pause, uh, meaning a consolidation and or a pullback can be either or. That's a reaction. So far, this is a reaction. This, uh, the fact we're looking at a 60 minute chart, pretty much since we gapped up, we've traded in this area uh, within the support zone all day or the resistance slash target zone. So that next target, and you can see the 38.2 fib right up there. And I uh, have a target set at 103.20. And as I talked about before, when we looked at the um, four hour charts and when I talked about shorting after we fell, dropped out of that trading range that we were in for the last couple months, uh, the most of the meat, the easy money was and the objective entry was at the top of the range when we broke down. And that as we got lower, with each tick lower, the risk return diminished. Same thing holds true here. You know, if you didn't go long here or any time after we had that reversal, and I, and I completely get it, um, a lot of traders don't like to catch falling knives the way I do. So they wanted to maybe wait for that, uh, uh, the bullish candlesticks. I mean, if I go back to a daily chart here, 
Uh, for some reason, TC2000 is running really slow today, at least for me. Okay, here's the uh, yeah, daily chart on the SPY. And look at that hammer. I mean, hammered right off support. This is that green support level that was discussed, I think, as, as in last Friday's video, maybe the other one I did during the week. Um, but you can see this this was a nice hammer. So then, then again, if you didn't want to go long at support because it looked like the world was coming to an end, the sky was falling, um, then you waited for that nice reversal candlestick. Uh, same thing, as I mentioned on the cues, how we closed back above uh back above uh, support and here's a daily chart of the cues that was that previous reaction high that's where that trading range normalized back in uh, August and you can see you know a nice uh, intraday uh, break and close back above support so so far this you know is, is bullish price action and um, again you could have waited till prices moved back up and you know close to four o'clock it was you know, almost certain we were or we were going to close above that level. So you could add it on or initiate it there, and that would have still been objective. But now, as I said, as it, as we get to this point, um, a lot of the meat on this on the bone of this trade, and believe me, factoring into all of this, what I'm talking about here is my overall longer-term bias that I believe that we are in the early stages of a, or very likely in the early stages of a bear market. Hence, this would be if i am correct a counter trend or a bear market rally and that's why i'm not looking for a move up to new highs like i'm sure uh, a lot of um you know people who are very bullish are i'm looking for a move um as i mentioned either up to this level here uh possibly you know up to the 102 106 25 area uh i even have another resistance uh level or target up above that but again, the risk reward diminishes quite a bit. And um, if if this is indeed a bear market that we're in, that's probably going to be the extent of it. And if at the very least, the risk reward is rapidly diminishes at that point. And that is the reason it, it, if and when we get here, uh, I won't be trailing stops, rather booking profits and getting out and having that money in cash. And again, that all goes back to the velocity thing that I talked about. Meaning I don't want to be stuck in here, even if we are going higher, chopping around for weeks and months just to eke out another, you know, two, three, four, five percent in the uh, indices. And again, if uh, something in the charts changes that convinces me to do otherwise, I'll do so. But, uh, you know, as a trader, I consider myself like an ambush predator, you know, like a cheetah in Africa. You watch those videos on Discovery Channel. Uh, the cheetah or the lion, they, they sit patiently waiting for the right opportunity, for the right animal to come close enough, something that looks slower, or not healthy, and, they, and then they prounce on it. If they chase after every little gazelle that walks by, they, they won't survive. They'll expend all their energy. Same thing with trading. You can't trade all the time. You can't force trading. You have to sit back patiently and be ready to make your move. And when it comes, like it did here on the breakdown below these cues, I mean, again, if you weren't already short, um, that was when you wanted to jump on it. And, um, you, you know, yesterday when we hit the key support, we have the bullish divergences in place and everything else. That's when you, you needed to be ready to get in. And, uh, like I said, right now, sure. Do I see a little more upside? I do. But at this point I wouldn't be adding right here, right under support, at least not on the initial tag. Uh, again, pull back to this area here on the queues, as I mentioned, 10270, maybe all the way down to, uh, you know, 102.50, somewhere in there, it looks like a good level to add on a pullback. And uh, you could have stops not too far below, just in case we're heading back down lower. Now let's wrap this up. That's gone on long enough. I'm going to try to keep it under the, keep this video under the 60-minute uh, mark. Now let's look at the SPY. And let's go to a daily chart. No, better yet, better yet, let's look at a weekly chart. Okay, I've made the case quite a bit uh, that, uh, as I'm sure others have, that this bull market is not only long in the tooth, but really going on. I can't remember, uh, I put up something recently. We were already approaching uh, the duration of being the second longest bull market in history. Uh, so we're well past the average uh, duration of a bull market. All these, every single primary, when I say primary, I'm talking the diversified broad U.S. indices have all shattered their bull market uh, uptrend lines. So their trend lines have been broken. And 
all but a handful. The longest term trend indicators that I use have already moved over to bearish, clearly bearish. There's still, as I mentioned, a few uh, long term based on monthly charts. And it depends how we end this month. Now, this is where it gets interesting. <clears throat> and this is where, uh, you know, as a trader, I need to be flexible right now. And I think everybody needs to be flexible. If, just so let's assume if we are in a new bear market. Um, I don't I don't see a meltdown scenario like 2008. Uh, there were a lot of things that happened back then with the credit bubble and banks failing and everything going on. Uh, I don't think we'll have such a, a steep meltdown. But for those of you that that um, you know are familiar with Elliott Wave Theory, you know primary trends usually consist of, of five waves. You have a wave, you know, first wave down. Uh, a second wave up, and then P3, they call it, primary wave three, is the largest wave. And then you have a fourth wave up, and oh, I'm trying to get, well, you can see where that stops on the S&P, and wave five down. So let's do it again a little clearer here if I could. Uh, wave one down, two up, three down, four up, and five down. Uh, we even had, uh, looks like a five-way, we had one major correction during this entire bull market that, as I've mentioned before, it was actually a bear market in just about all other indices, the small caps. I think the NASDAQ itself either dropped 20% or fell just so shy of it. Small caps went down more than 20%. Um, the only thing that didn't were, I, I believe, the S&P 500 and a few of the large, you know, large cap indexes. But, you know, if you look at this, there's a, you know, wave one down, two up powerful three down, four up, and then five down. So there was a, a five wave, um, you know, primary wave, if you call it. Uh, obviously, it was within a larger bull market. And the rest of the corrections, uh, a lot of them were your typical uh, A, B, C downs, wave A, B up, C down, those type of corrections. So again, I'm talking Elliott wave. I am far from an expert in Elliott wave theory, but if that is going to play out, and if we are in a new primary bear market, then one might expect that this was wave one down, this was two up, and we are in three down. Now, three down is the most impulsive wave. It's the largest wave. By impulsive, I mean a near, you know, almost a near vertical uh, uh, descent. So this is why I'm on caution or on, on guard that at any moment just when this rally that we're in now looks like it may start to be getting some traction and believe me i don't i hardly turn the tv on i hardly watch the news i'll read headlines from the journal barons uh, i scan headlines but um years ago as a trader i learned to try to tune out most of the the garbage that's on tv and they're so reactive so i can only imagine the giddiness right now if i were to turn on cnbc or bloomberg but anyways that's that's neither here nor there what i'm trying to get at is just when this rally may start to look like it's getting some traction and all the bulls are coming back in and and we're going to new highs there that's when we may reverse and that could happen any day now it could come today it could come tomorrow again i'm still looking for some near term upside for at least a couple days but uh, if we get that P3 down, just kind of eyeballing this chart, you know, I could make, uh, I could tell you I see some support here. There is some support down there, but this is a, this is a solid target that I do think will be visited uh, before this bear market, assuming we are in a new bear market, is said and done. And that may be, uh, you know, just looking at this, that could be the end of our third wave down, and then we get a four up and a final final fifth wave down but uh just something to keep in mind okay that um just like it looked like the, the world was going to end the other day on wednesday and the market was going to hell in a handbasket that's when we reversed and we're up i don't know i haven't done the math probably five six seven percent uh depending on what index you're looking at um so the uh, just when things start to look good is when the selling could kick back in so again i'm on guard i gave, gave you my near term near-term plan and um, you know if that changes I'll, I'll let everybody know this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it